With the recent release of the new XBMC, I thought I'd go through some of the remotes that I have for my XBMC setup, some of the mistakes I've made over the years, uh, and the reasons that I've ended up using the remotes that I use. I'm lucky enough to have all of the remotes that I've purchased for the XBMC system right here in front of me. So uh, let's go through the different ones that I've chosen, why I've chosen them, what they do and what they don't do. First, let's start with a banana for scale. That way you can see exactly what we're looking at here. We have full-size keyboards, we have TV remotes, we have miniature keyboards, and we have additional accessories. That's what we've got, and let me explain why we've got what we've got. There's two main systems that XBMC works on. The first is the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi is a great machine, and it's great when you're starting out. The best part about the Raspberry Pi is that it's got libcec, and what libcec lets you do is let's use your conventional TV remote to control XBMC. Users like me, who previously had, uh, didn't have a Raspberry Pi, probably have one of these, which is a net top. This net top is called an Acer Revo. It's a, an Aspire Revo, in fact. Uh, it's the R3700. This one had an HDMI on the back of it, you can see there. It plays 1080p videos, and it's fantastic. People who want something more advanced often will choose this one. And there's a couple of reasons why. It's got the uh, optical out on the side. Uh, it does full 1080p, and of course you can run, render a desktop with it as well. So that's why some people have chosen that one. Unfortunately, for me anyways, the R3700 doesn't have libcec, so that's why I had to look at other remotes. But let's first go through typical TV remotes that people would have to control their XBMC. The first one here is a, is a uh, well, probably looks a lot like your TV remote. Unfortunately, this isn't my TV remote. This is my stereo remote. And while it has some universal functions, it doesn't work with my TV because my TV is too new. Instead, I have to use this one. This is a gyroscopic mouse TV controller from LG. You can see the volume, channel controls, a mute button, a 3D button, which doesn't really do anything, a quick menu, which also doesn't really do anything. This wheel mouse, which is kind of crap. When you shake it, it activates a pointer mouse, but that pointer mouse doesn't actually work inside XBMC. It's got a, a microphone that, again, doesn't work. You know, this remote's really crap. So even if you do have a Raspberry Pi and you have a crap remote like this, you're probably going to want to look at some of, the, some of these other remotes. So let's just go through some of the ones that I've chosen over the years and why I've chosen them. The first one here is the first one that I bought. This is a, called a RI, R-I-I. R -I -I. The RI is a 2.4 gigahertz USB based miniature keyboard. So with this one, you can see the size of the trackpad. The keys are kind of small. They're plasticky and, and actually they've got a pretty good feedback. You know what? I've had this for years, and it's probably the reason I have most of my collection here. I've really enjoyed using this one. It's got some of these uh, functions under the F keys. If you have a look, you can see the mute, volume up, and volume down. They're probably the ones I use most often. What's even better about this is when I switch to a conventional desktop, it's easy enough to use the keys and to access everything. Now, this does have some features that I don't use very often. This has an ability to turn it sideways with function and this key, Alt. You can turn it sideways so you can use it more like a conventional remote, but it's not very great at doing that. Also, this little mouse pad is really small and fiddly. It's not consistent in the way you move the mouse. So not only is this the reason that I've kept my remotes because I kind of enjoy using it, it's also always fallen short, which is probably why I have more than one. All right, so besides that, this has a rechargeable battery inside of it. All you do is just plug it in via USB. And uh, it also has a laser pointer, which is great for my two cats. They love this remote. So that tells you both why I have it and why I don't like it. Let's move on to the next one. This next one is also a re. Sorry, I'm just going to put that one back in frame here so you can see it. This one's also a re, but it's like the second generation. This was supposed to be better because I could hold it like this, but what I didn't pick up on eBay is that these keys aren't plasticky, they're rubbery. 
And actually, if you press really hard on any particular key, the whole board flexes. In the back here, it's also got well, a rechargeable battery, but it's also got this the 2.4 gigahertz dongle. The only thing is, this one doesn't work as well as the other Wii. In fact, I use this one a little bit, and I quickly get frustrated by it. So I end up going back to this one. So while I give the first Wii probably an 8 out of 10, this one is so crap I never even plug it in. It's totally crap. Next, I bought a full-sized keyboard. The reason I bought a full-sized keyboard is, even though I enjoy using the Wii, it's kind of small and fumbly when you have to type something longer in, like a YouTube address or something. So I thought, why not try out a full-size keyboard? And let me tell you, it's the winner. This I've had for a couple of years. This is the uh, Logitech K400. Now, I know they've updated it a couple times. It's the K700 and K800. It's fantastic. Not only does it have the mute, volume down, volume up, and home keys, which all work automatically in XBMC, even in the Linux-based one, it also has a nice big mouse pad, which works with two-finger scrolling. Again, works straight away in XBMC for Linux. It's fantastic. Plus, when I have to type something longer, like I said, just pop it on my lap. It works. It's great. Now, this one doesn't come with a, with a rechargeable battery. Instead, it comes with two AA batteries. But as long as you have some on hand, this is great. It also has a 2.5 gigahertz dongle, but it comes with this little dongle extender. So whereas this one doesn't always work, this one with the dongle extender on it seems pretty consistent. I loved this one, I've always loved this one, but I've always wanted something a little smaller and easier. So that's why I bought this one, the Low Free Touchpad. The Low Free Touchpad is a full mouse. The whole thing is a mouse. It works with two finger scrolling straight out of the box. And if you can see, it's got all the different keys and functions on it of a number pad. So in my head, I thought, well, that means I can scroll up and down, left and right. I can even pre-program certain numbers to do different functions. Great, right? This one's going to be the winner. Only it's not. It's the worst one I've got because these numbers don't actually work unless you're using Windows 7 or 8. So actually, all I've got here is a giant touchpad mouse, which is kind of okay if you want to scroll and touch something, but if you want any higher functionalities or if you ever want to use a desktop, it's complete rubbish. Complete rubbish. This is the worst thing I ever owned. For nine bucks, you can get one, but why would you waste your nine bucks? So let's just do a quick run through again. If you're going to start out with your XBMC on a Raspberry Pi, your home remotes are a great place to start. If you're like me and you've got this terrible gyroscopic mouse one, well, you're going to want to switch it pretty quick. Once you have a go, if you're looking for a miniaturized keyboard, this redesign is the best one. I'm sorry. I've wiped the back quite a bit there, but it says it's the model RTMWK01 with a 2.4 gigahertz mouse. I say I've had it for years. It's, it's pretty tough and pretty sturdy. This one, avoid it. It's terrible. This, the K400, it's great. I'm even thinking of doing the upgrade. If I ever do, I'll do a follow-up video. Uh, it's, been, it's been really good to me. It's the one I always reach for. Whenever I see it, I got it. It's great. This one, definitely, definitely pass. Terrible rubbish, low free. We gotta sort this out. So there we have it, the two winners. And in fact, these are the two that I have plugged in. So if you ever see me using my XBMC box, you'll see me using one of these two remotes. Typically I'm using this one, but if I've just been playing with the cats, or the cats are being a pain trying to choose something, I'll play with this one and then use that to control XBMC at the same time. So there you have it. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Hope you found it useful. Don't forget to subscribe to my video and give it a like. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. Don't forget I'm accepting donations. The donations help to buy really cool things, sometimes complete duds of things. Thanks for those who contributed. You helped me buy this, and I hope that it helps you avoid buying the same mistake that I've made. Thanks again. Any further questions, let me know. If you have any suggestions for future videos, of course you can post them below. I'm always interested to hear. And uh, hopefully you'll find the videos that you're looking for amongst my pages. Thanks again.